Today we are going to discuss about Google Summer of Code with Async API. So let's get started. First of all, we should know what is Async API, right? So Async API is a specification for event driven architectures. So what are event driven architectures? So before jumping on directly on the basic definition, we are going to see it live. So here you can see the button, right? The read the docs. So if you click on it, so as soon as you click on it, it takes you to a particular documentation page, right? Now, how it happens? So you click on it, the browser listens to that event. Okay. Browser listens to that click event. So click is an event. Understand it. Click is an event. Browser listens to it and performs an action. So browser is kind of is following an event driven architecture. Similarly, there are other systems, a coffee machine, you press a button and you choose a coffee type and based on that a coffee will be delivered. So that's again an event driven architecture. Okay. Pressing of button. Now, another uh, nice example that I remember is street lights example. So this real states, they are having nice uh, solar lights uh, systems. Like it automatically turns on in nighttime and autom automatically turns off in during the daytime, right? So how this happens? So these are event driven systems. What it does, uh, it actually has a sensor, a luminosity sensor, and it checks whether it's a daylight. If it is a daylight, sends an event that, okay, uh, just turn it off because we have reached a particular threshold value and you should turn over. you can sh you should turn off so that's how the microprocessor is designed it listens to that event and performs an action so as soon as the luminosity value decreases that means the darkness increases automatically it gets turned on so this automatically word is actually related to event driven so event has been sent and based on that event a particular action has been done so that's how the whole event driven architecture works so this is what event driven architecture is async api helps to build build this event driven architectures and also maintain them using a particular specification what is specification specification is particular set of guidelines or a particular rules that you have to follow to build or to generate or to what do you say uh, create something uh, out of uh, it's like something you have data you create an information out of it so something similar to that analogy that we have particularly a uh, particular data and we format it in according to some specification and rules to generate value out of it. Okay. So that's what specification means. Async API specification helps you to create specification in such a way that it helps you to create event driven architectures, simple and also maintain it. That's also clear. So this is what whole async API does. And uh, you might have now it can be similar, very similar to swagger if you have worked with on it or if you have seen it or whatever if you have listened to it anywhere in the sessions or anywhere so swagger is something dedicatedly for uh, rest apis designing rest apis but this is async api specification is for designing asynchronous apis for event driven architectures it can be uh, useful for the street lights that i said and uh, it can be useful for coffee machines or even it can be useful for any event driven message queues or anything like that okay so you can do that pub uh, they can publish sub pub sub methods and all these things uh don't if you are a beginner don't get uh, confused or perplexed with all this stuff these are the things you may need later but not now so focus on what are event driven architectures and what is the basic uh, over picture or overview of async api now this is the first thing that we covered what is async api and what are event driven architectures second thing is about the google summer of code the so async api participates in google summer of code so in 2021, it was a part of uh, Google Summer of Code. Second thing, in 2022, uh, Async API wasn't able to participate. So they launched their own mentorship program for 2022. And it was the same as Google Summer of Code. You'll be getting paid of 1500 USD as per Google Summer of Code. Same stuff. 10 spots will be there. Okay. And total of 15,000 USD will be allo allotted as a program budget for it okay and it's not restricted just to students working professionals can also learn because it's a completely open source program so there is no nda or anything legal bindings to it okay so you can freely work on this uh, in a free time okay uh, if you want to contribute to open source or know about the things deep dive into event driven architectures or even if you are just amazed about the things which i just said right now but event driven architectures and you feel that okay i should explore this so it's always better to submit an application for async api mentorship program or the google summer of code if it is in 2023 if you are in part of that okay so this is about uh, the mentorship program so 
what are the steps to be taken for joining the mentorship program? So first of all, go to this link, github.com slash async API. I'll be putting it in the video description. Now, what you have to do is go to the async API Slack workspace. This is the first thing that you have to do. Go to the Slack workspace. Because Slack workspace is the place where all people connect. They communicate where you can also communicate. You can ask questions where you can also take some guidance from the existing engineers because Slack workspace have a lot of engineers, qualified and very well esteemed engineers who have uh, done profound work in their field. Okay, so you can connect with them, build your network as well. So get to know, learn from them. Okay, and it's not just any uh, community or anything like that. It's particularly highly focused group. So you can focus on that. Join that Slack workspace. And uh, you know about the basic etiquettes of our Slack works will be respectful to everyone, don't discriminate or anything, and we are nice people, you know. So these are the things, <laughs> join our Slack workspace, that's, you can do. And then there are public meetings held uh, on, like, it is held live, and you can also view it on YouTube about the public meetings. And also you can join them by uh, going to the this particular link, you are going to find the different steps to how to join, add the calendar and all this stuff. And you can subscribe to newsletter and all these things you can do to join Async API community to get started with the things. Because this is the right time to know what an organization is doing and uh, how you can contribute to it. Okay, so this is the uh, basic first initial step that you have to do to be part of it. Okay, now the next thing that you should do is look out on the projects. So how, what are the different projects? So first of all, you go to asyncapia.com, go to tools section. Here you are going to find different projects, active projects, or the production grade project that has been pushed. So here you can see studio. So studio is basically, uh, right now what's happening? You can see here, you designed, you typed all this thing, right? But studio will help you to do, it's a low code platform to design this whole specification. So if you want to uh, type an info, you can drag and drop the info object, something like that. Okay, so Studio helps you. It's built. It's built in React using React Flow. Uh, we might shift it to some more optimized uh, way for larger specification files. But for now, it's React. Uh, we are using React, so React developers can go to Studio, learn about this low code UI, how it's built. Okay. Next thing is CLI. So a few more things I want to talk about. Studio is uh, Studio here is basically helps you design a single page. Just drag and drop UI that you are going to build and different kind of uh, struggles that you're going to face mostly in the uh, how to create a collaborative stuff in studio so the studio has really a lot of scope it the collaboration feature is one of the points that you can work on then second thing there can be uh, how to scale studio for larger async api files you can have a github discussions or and so async api works on github discussions like everything is uh, open what are the decisions are taken they are going to be via github discussions only okay so it's public and uh, anyone can access it so uh, there's a transparency that is to be followed in every stuff okay that's about studio okay now next thing is cli cli is uh, basically uh, whatever so command line applications in, in fact this command line interface but what what exactly it is used for so you have a particularly a particular job and see a circle ci or a, you can say a particular script that you run on circle ci or any continuous ci cd mechanism okay and you want to generate artifacts or perform actions on async api documents from the uh, cli from the circle ci right or from any other ci cd uh, stuff except github actions okay because for github actions we already have uh, the dedicated file so that's there but for CLI, it's, uh, you can use this particular CLI to generate it's an NPM package again and you can just use it uh, that gives you the CI/CD mechanism and just uh, validate async API files or generate code from uh, async API documents, all these things, okay? Now CLI also has generator in it. So generator is a, another package, okay? It helps to, it, it has the code to generate valuable information from async API documents. So here you have the async API document of the specification document right now, here you can see. Now from this, you can actually generate code, generate documentation, or it can be anything that you like to do. Okay, it can be template as well. So for generator, there are a lot of ideas that we can, you can get. So the more you have exposure on the different uh, topics in tech domain, generator is very helpful for them. So focus on that. If you have uh, experienced a lot of things in your journey in the tech, so you can focus on generator part. Again, Modelina is there. Modelina is again, I haven't worked with much with Modelina, but I recommend you to join the Slack workspace and ask the Modelina regarding Modelina. 
uh, you'll be definitely finding a lot of interesting folk getting connected with interesting engineers who have worked on Marlin and delivered this particular project. Okay. Next is parsers. So parsers, what are they? Uh, they are the integral part of whole async API documentation. So whatever rules and everything which are defined, they are quite validated by parsing parsers. Okay. So now whatever you see that async API info title. So how they are coming, right? This particularly keywords. So these are done by parsers. Parsers are designed based on async API specification. So you can contribute to parsers. Parsers are quite, uh, you can say, they are very less. Uh, what you say? All these other projects are very uh, highly volatile to changes. Changes, right? It can be changed. Uh, their features can be added. It passes. You have to discuss with the team. Discuss different use cases. Those the business which are using async API. Async API is completely open source, but there are businesses which are using async API. So a lot of things come into passes. So if you want to learn slightly about connecting with different businesses, product management and all, how things work. Parsers will be the right place for them. Uh, but I'm not uh, completely, uh, like I don't recommend directly jump onto parsers because it's com slightly complex. You should need to understand first what are the different async API documents, what are the different uh, keywords and different keys, properties, read the docs and all stuff. The docs are mandatory. So if you know this, then you can actually get to the things done. So I don't, I don't say that, uh, just read this then join the slack instead you should first join the slack ask them read the docs do it very parallel wise so read the docs get to know what are the async api components and all these things tutorials follow them so and then you can understand the core of the things and that's how you can choose then you can choose the project or you can have a different idea that you want to come with come on with async api so these are the things you can try to be part of google summer of code or to be async api mentorship program as i said okay so this is about whole idea. Now let's uh, get started with all this and uh, I'll be creating more series on open source and different uh, JavaScript related uh, stuff. So yeah, uh, based on basically on low code UIs. So stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, uh, do give a thumbs up, a subscribe and also tell people about async API, how it works and uh, and get involved with the community, right? Join the Slack workspace here. Uh, every every link is in the like whatever links that we have discussed in this video will be shared in the description that's it thank you